You're listening to Give God 90, where we're not afraid of the tough biblical questions, because we will dig through the language, the culture, and the history to find the truth revealed in the words of our Creator. Welcome to Give God 90 Radio On Demand. My name is Jerry Mitchell, your host for Give God 90. Thank you so much for joining me for just a little while today. It really is an honor for me when you give up a little bit of your most valuable resource, and that is your time, just to spend it uh, with me, really. And we're going to continue looking today at this thing we call grace and we're going to dive into it a little deeper than I had the opportunity to the other night. Uh, but before we get into that, let me remind you, if you go to GiveGod90.com, there are some interesting things there. I've changed things around just a little bit. But the basic premise of it is still there, and that is that 90-day, uh, not really a challenge, but that 90-day period of time where you can break it up and make little bitty changes to your life every day that you can continually do that will improve your life and bring you back into, uh, I guess we could say into line with the way that your creator designed you to live. A few weeks ago, I mentioned that we were going to put out the offer for people who wanted to, uh, and I don't want to say sponsor, really, that's not a good way to, to say it. Um, but where you could be noticed if you want, you know, if you had a product that you wanted to put out, maybe you have a hobby or something you want people to know about, uh, maybe an Etsy site or something small, it could be a business, you know, that's fine too. But we would make mention of it, uh, so that the group that listens to this would be able to, uh, know where you are in the world, wherever you are in the world, because you know, we have people all over, right? <clears throat> Something I really didn't think about, um, and this is not a bad thing, this is a good thing, because it came up to me this morning, uh, was what would happen if we actually were able to mention certain, and, and I don't really want to say charities, okay? That, that's not where I want to go with this. But some people that listen to Give God 90, some people that we are involved with, uh, friends on Facebook and that kind of thing, run various ministries. And something hit me this morning. I said, you know what, I can, I can do this uh, and hopefully help people. Uh, one that we are going to mention a couple of times today, <clears throat> excuse me, is an orphanage in, uh, I believe it's Bugiri, Uganda in Africa, and it's the Ministry of Nabokula Center. I am. I apologize for not being able to pronounce these names properly. If I'm messing these names up, put them, put it in the comments, make comment of it, and let me know. Uh, but it's the Ministry. I believe it is Nabakula or Nabakela Center in Bugiri, Uganda, and that is in Africa. Uh, they are caring currently for 32 children and would like uh, some donations. I will put a link, if you want to make a donation, in the comment section of uh, the Spreaker site. So you can go to that and see the comments. It will be there if you choose to support them. Uh, there are other places where people are looking for, and, and a couple of orphanages in particular, where they're not looking for uh, money, they're looking for things like books and Bibles, um, maybe some CDs where you know children can learn uh, Bible songs, that kind of thing. Those kind of things are, are very easy for people to send things to. I believe that Uganda has been uh, placed on the you can send packages there through the mail list. I need to check that out today because I have a package that I was going to try and send uh, several weeks ago, and I think it can go now. So, Jackie, if you're listening, I'm going back to the post office today, and we're going to try and, and do that again. We're, we'll see. <clears throat> um, but really, we you know, we are called to help people, right? If you are able to help these folks out, you know, give them a hand. 
give them a hand. They need it. To, you know, things are tough. I know COVID's been tough on a lot of people. Uh, it's been hard to, to send things places. It's been hard to get supplies places. Uh, but truly, 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 we really do need to do more than what we're doing to make sure that that what the people we care about, which should be everybody, are being cared for. All right. So as we do that, we will. Um, I'm up, I will try and remember to mention that another time or two before we stop today uh, as we're looking at grace. When I started looking at this the other night, I realized very quickly that people today have perverted this thing called grace. And when we look back at the history of grace, we see it in Scripture. Uh, it actually begins in Genesis Chapter 6, where, where we talk about Noah found favor or he found grace in the eyes of the Creator. Uh, again, uh, Genesis 18, where uh, Abraham says, he goes out to his visitors and he says, Look, if, if you find grace in my hospitality, stay and eat. Stay and eat. Again, in Deuteronomy, we read about grace. Uh, people-to-people -people kind of grace where a woman is responsible. She wasn't allowed to divorce her husband, but she could remove grace from the home if, if her husband wasn't being a good provider, a good husband, doing the things he was supposed to do. He was, to, she was, I'm sorry, she was, her duty is to remove grace from the home. Okay? She, it's, it's her job, it's her responsibility to, to make life tough on the guy so that he either hopefully sees the error of his ways and straightens up and begins to live the way he's designed to live and provide the way he's designed to provide. And if he couldn't, there was also, uh, 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 I don't want to say privileges, but there was included in the instructions from the Almighty, you know, things that he could do to help himself and to help her. So all of those things... All of those things. And now we look at grace in a certain way. And it's really, really sad. It, it truly is. Grace today has been pervert, really perverted. You know, we think about, um, and there's one particular gentleman, I, I am reluctant to mention his name, um, but he's written some books and he really twist grace into something it's not. And, and Mr. Max Licato, I apologize to you, sir, but you really, really need to figure this thing out. Honestly, grace is so much more than what you present it to be. It truly, truly is. And I'd really welcome the opportunity to sit down and, and talk about this with you because it's not a New Testament thing. It's not just something that God, you know, gives us by the buckets full if we are not living the way he designed us to live. Uh, I had a, a person, and, and I really don't mind this a whole lot, because the people who listen to me all the time know uh, where we're coming from. But someone whose name is, uh, well, basically anonymous because... Uh, unknown unknown was the name that they they go by and they simply copy and paste comments and it's the same comment all the time on some youtube uh, uh not videos but audio things that we do because this is on youtube as well on my youtube channel and a lot of people listen to that uh, by the way we, if you if you choose to listen to this, you can listen to it several ways. YouTube's one way. You can download our free app. That's another way. We're all over most of, if not all of, the podcast outlets. You know, wherever free podcasts are sold, as I, I like to joke about that. But this person who you know lists their name as unknown, unknown talks about faith, and they say, "Well, faith is all you need for salvation." Well, no, it's not, and we can point to James who tells us that even even the demons believe that's faith faith is believing even the demons have faith in god they, they know who he is they know what he is and they are absolutely terrified they know they have no salvation 
because they stand in opposition to the Creator. If you stand in opposition to your Creator, um, that's not that's not receiving salvation. Salvation is the gift, and it's given by grace with mercy. Grace is is something we have offered to us, and it is fuel for our spirit. And it doesn't matter if you believe in God. You can be a complete atheist, and trust me on this. You are seeking someone's grace. You are seeking someone's favor. You want to feel like someone appreciates you. Like someone approves of you. That's what Abraham was doing in Genesis 18. He goes out to his visitors and he says, you know, please, if if you find favor in me, if you find grace in my hospitality, stay and let me feed you. He was looking for their favor, their grace in them allowing him to be hospitable. Even atheists do that among each other. And I think that's why some of the secular world in these uh, big name colleges, you know, why they they write papers that only they themselves read. You know, nobody, (laughs) this is going to sound funny. There's a lot of, of college professors who write papers and books that are never read outside of a college professor's realm of expertise. They, they publish these things knowing that it's only going to be read by very few people. And that what they're doing is they're, they're asking for favor. They're asking for grace among their contemporaries. They're asking for this among the people that they hang out with, the people who think like them, the people who are like them. And what happens, unfortunately, is they get caught up in this realm and they think, because there's 20 people that agree with me, I must be right. Well, if, if 20 people believe that 2 plus 2 equals 5, it doesn't make you right. It just means you found 20 people who are as dumb as you are. <laughs> okay, that's that's not very blunt, very simple. If, if you can find 20 people that believe 2 plus 2 is 5, you found 20 people who are just as dumb as you are. And, and that's sad, isn't it? That nobody is going to stand up to a college professor and say, no, professor, 2 plus 2 does not equal 5, it equals 4. No, professor, you're wrong. Evolution can't take place because what you're describing is actually de-evolution. No, professor, I'm offering you the grace of the Almighty because the grace that you've been receiving from your, your contemporaries is unholy grace. It's not holy grace. It's not set apart. It's of the world. And it's something that was sent not by God, but by evil itself. And you, sir, or madam, need to change. That's what we need to be doing to these people is setting them straight, making sure that that they know and they understand that just because they want something to be true doesn't mean it's true. Did you know that Jude, and I, I if you haven't listened to uh, last Thursday night's, uh, we did it Facebook Live, it was on Spreaker, or on the podcast at the same time, we, we do that simultaneously, If you hadn't listened to that, you might want to go back and listen to it because Meyer read most of the book of Jude. It's it's only a little over 200 words in Greek, uh, almost 300 words in English. But really, it's not that long. It's it's easy. And Jude, who was the brother of Yeshua, the brother of Jesus, but he doesn't present himself that way. He was very humble. And he starts out saying, look, we, I, w- I want to talk about salvation, but I need to talk about something else. I want to, I want to share with you the, the greatest gift imaginable. But I have to tell you about something else. I want to tell you that we have to talk about the faith that used to be delivered to the saints. Well, who used to deliver Who used to deliver the gospel that was once delivered to the saints? If nobody else, it was Jesus. It was Yeshua himself. And his his faith, his gospel that he was speaking was not death, burial, and resurrection. The gospel he was speaking was repent for the kingdom 
is at hand. It's just out of reach. We can't get to it in this earthly body, but it's right there. Any second, you can <laughs> you can be taken from this earth and you have the opportunity. You have the opportunity to receive the gospel. And you're going to need it at that point. But he goes on, he says, look, some people have entered into your group of friends, into your realm of being, whether it's a fellowship, whether it's a church, whether it is uh, just a, 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 a collection of close friends and family. Jude says, look, there's some people that have already come in and they've already been judged. They know that what they're teaching is wrong. They know what they're doing is wrong. They're, they're teaching you things that drive a wedge between you and your creator. They're using grace the wrong way. They're using grace to do sinful things. And they refuse. They refuse to accept Yeshua as the one who will be their master. And he, he goes on and he talks about, you know, remember the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah? What they received, the punishment they received... The punishment that the people receive who drive a wedge between you and your Creator will be far worse. A little while later, he says, look, we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to show people mercy who have doubts. It's our responsibility to offer the, to tell them, repent. For the kingdom is at hand. Live the way your creator designed you to live. We can't pray them out of the fire, but we can certainly, uh, by our actions, by our deeds, by asking the Almighty, look, they didn't believe me. Maybe you can send them somebody who will, that they will believe, who, who will help. You know, I might have planted a seed, send somebody to water, send somebody to grow. But we need to do what we can. It might not be your responsibility to completely remove them from the fire, but you know what? At least you can be the one to call the fire department, right? Here is the thing. It's our responsibility to care for people. You know, just as uh, the the ministry of Nabu Kela or Kalu Nabu. Kalu, how I'm, again, I, I'm terrible with these names that I don't hear. But the Nabakalu or Nabakalu Center in Bore, Uganda, caring for those children, they need help. When you run across somebody, and, and I have friends that I know who refuse religion, they live what they think is a good life. And, and a couple of them that I know, absolutely, they give you the shirt off their back. But they say, I was, I have been burned by the church and I want nothing to do with those people. Their life, you would think if you looked at their life that they spent every time the church doors opened, they were in there. But they don't want anything to do with a group of people uh, who basically are hypocrites, who use grace in a perverted way. That's sad. That there are people out there who have been so, their lives have been so disrupted by a, a, a worship community that they don't want anything to do with the church. They don't want anything to do with a group who calls themselves Christian or religious. They're more comfortable being around people that they know they can help. But they want to do it, they, they need to do it outside of that realm of worship. They haven't turned their back on God completely. They acknowledge God. They understand God. But what they have turned their back on is people. Well, more specifically, people who claim to act in God's name, but don't. They act in their own name. Many times what they do isn't for themselves. It's for I'm sorry, one, many times what they do is for themselves and not for the Almighty. You know, in 
going back to Jude for a moment, in verse 16, and I'm going to read this from uh, the International Children's Bible. It says, These people always complain and blame others. They always do the evil things they want to do. They brag about themselves, and the only reason they say good things about other people is to get what they want. I want you to be very aware of who is in your group. Who sneaks around and talks about other people? You know, we had a, a, a Sukkot gathering the other day, and it was very, very wonderful to see all the people come together. Some of these people uh, were new to us. Uh, some of these folks uh, were, were, it was their first time at a, a Sukkot uh, gathering. And it, it was kind of funny because, you know, we've been uh, out in, in different communities, even through this COVID thing. We've been working and a few of us came together. I think there was uh, a little over 20 people here. And uh, some of them, it was their first time meeting. And, and it was amazing to watch them gather because I knew I knew the spirit from the Almighty was there. I I didn't see, I didn't notice, I didn't feel any unholy spirit presence in that place the entire day. You know, there was some joking and some kidding around, but it was all good-hearted, good-humored, uh, wonderful, wonderful stuff. Uh, even uh, even the kids, you know, were running around playing ball and doing different things. Isn't it good to be able to to develop a community like that? Isn't it good to be able to have people come together knowing that they, I, I don't want to say they are safe, but knowing that their soul is safe among these people. What Jude's telling us is there is some people who try to sneak in. And here is something I'm going to say. You don't have to, uh, in a worship community, a lot of times people think, well, they have to be solemn all the time. They have to sit there in this attitude of prayer all the time. They have, you know, oh, we, we can't laugh. We can't have fun. We can't do this. And it's just the opposite. You can laugh. You can have fun. You can enjoy each other's company. It's okay. When the time comes to sit down and study, oh, that's when things get serious. That's when things, that's when you see things happen. That's when you see the looks on these faces. Now, they're, they're still enjoying themselves. They still have that joyful look, but now they're concentrating. Now they're watching. Now they're, they're doing things. We had a, a, a little bonfire. We were sitting around the bonfire talking about different things. And I, it, it, their voices changed. I didn't really notice it that much, how people's voices change when you talk about in-depth biblical concepts. And you really um, don't see the faces of people. But they, they do. And I've also been around places where you know, there was no biblical talk whatsoever. And, and here's the interesting thing. Those voices don't change. Those things of the world are of the world. But when believers gather, they can have fun, they can enjoy themselves, they can be joyful. But when it comes to actually digging through the biblical truth, you can hear it in their voice. They're concerned. They want to know in-depth, detailed truth. When you have that kind of, of connection with your Creator, because they, they, they weren't connecting to me, they weren't really connecting to each other, when that voice changes, you could tell that Spirit was connecting to the Creator. That's when you know. You're among true believers. That's another way to tell the difference. That's when you know that these people aren't going to blame others for their problems. They're not going to, to say evil things. They're not going to brag about themselves. 
But what they're going to do is glorify the Father. What they're going to do with every breath is try to please Him. We think about grace differently. There is a grace that uh, exists that does not come from our Creator. It comes from the created. If you're looking for that kind of acceptance, if you're looking for that kind of feeling, you'll never be satisfied. The unholy spirits that offer you acceptance, that offer you favor, you will never find satisfaction. I can guarantee it. If if the spirit of addiction offers you grace, you need to turn it down. You need to run away. You need to be other places. Absolutely. Go the other direction. Because you will never, no matter how much of whatever substance you try to take in, you will never be filled the way the grace of the Father who lives in heaven is going to fill you. No matter how much uh, pride, if, if you think pride isn't a spirit that will offer you favor, oh, it will offer you favor. But it will never satisfy you the way that the grace of our Creator will satisfy you. It doesn't matter. Any of these, you know, pick a, a secular topic. If you think evolutionaries, and yes, that's a word, evolution, people who, who believe in evolution are evolutionaries. If, if you think that they can sit around and, and what do they have? If the only thing they have is to make fun of and degrade and blame Christians and Jews who believe in creation, that's not building evolution. That's tearing another group down. That will never satisfy. They'll always be miserable until they repent and receive the grace from the Almighty. Then they can be satisfied. Until that point, they're done. Their history, they're over. They will never be satisfied. Your spirit, your soul is hungry. And it needs to be fed good food. The grace from the Almighty is that good food. I've, I've used this example before. If you drive a car or uh, you run a lawnmower and, or a boat and it says, look, you need to put gasoline in this. You don't want to put diesel fuel in it. You don't want to put water in it, right? That, that, it won't work. And it's the same way with your soul. It's the same way with your spirit. If you continually feed your spirit grace from these unholy sources, it's going to stop working. It's going to stop working. You will become physically ill because that stops working. But if you continually receive good spiritual food, good soul food, okay, from from the Almighty, your spirit will be healthy, your soul will be healthy, and in turn, it will help keep your body healthy. Think about that as you go through your day. Where are you getting your spiritual food? Where are you getting fed? Do you think you're being fed good spiritual food? Are you healthy physically? If you're not healthy physically, maybe you need to think about the spiritual food you're receiving. Maybe if you're not healthy physically, you need to think about maybe changing where you're getting fed. Something to think about. I'm not I'm not telling you to run out and change churches here. I'm I'm really not. What I'm saying is if you're not hearing coming out of your whatever pulpit you're listening to and you can't read that in your bible maybe it's time you spend more time in your bible and less time listening to what's coming out of the pulpit ladies and gentlemen 
it has been truly an honor uh, for you to spend some of your most valuable resources with me. Again, don't forget, you know, consider, just consider. If you don't do anything else, say a prayer for the ministry of Nabu Kalu, Nabu Kalu Center. Again, the Almighty's going to know what you mean. If you just say, Lord, you know, whatever he said, we need to do something with those with those folks. <laughs> it's in, I'm sorry, Bukhari, Uganda. I, I'm terrible with names. I really am. And, and I have what I know uh, is an English transliteration of uh, an African pronunciation for a name. So I'll never be able to say it properly. But just think about that. Just think about it. You know, look, maybe look at, at it in the comment in the comment section and say, "Well, you know, it's real." I, I he's uh, the one person I talked to sent me the uh, certificates from Uganda where they are a registered orphanage, so it's, I know it's real. Um, don't forget, keep them in prayer, keep them lifted up, lift each other up. Don't don't tear each other down. Lift each other up. We have so much work to do and so little time to get it done in. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful, wonderful week.